All right, uh, good afternoon to those of you on the East Coast. Good afternoon also to those of you on the West Coast. I'm your host, Brandon Troy, host and co-creator of Movers and Shakers Unlimited. And uh, once again, we are here with uh, another exclusive. As you know, this week we do have San Diego Comic-Con, you know, happening this week. And in lieu of that, I figure it'd be cool to have, you know, some awesome uh, guests uh, this week, not just virtually, but live as well as we get, you know, get further and further, you know, into the show. If you're checking out the title, you'll know that we do have, you know, a, a very special, you know, guests uh, for you. They are the co-founder of Comic-Con. Yes, that Comic-Con. Um, and they are also the founder of San Diego Comic Fest. It's my pleasure to, uh, to welcome back, actually, because um, he's been with us before, Mike Tyree. Let me bring him on. Mike, how's it going, man? How you doing? Doing good. Trying to get ready for Comic Con. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. So, uh, first and foremost, you know, as I've said to many folks, it has been uh, two and a half. However, you want to spin it, two and a half, three years. How have you been? Uh, been all right. You know, it's, uh, we had the uh, Comic Con Special Edition in November. Right. Exactly. Uh, so yes. You know, that, that wasn't the big show, but it was a lot of fun. And it was actually kind of nice that it wasn't too crowded and easier to get around the dealer's room and all that. But uh, we're looking, I'm looking forward to the big one. Yeah, I was going to say, it probably was a good change of pace. I know previously, you know, when we were having a conversation, uh, you know, talking about how much of a behemoth, obviously, you know, as I'm sure you've heard again and again of, of, of uh, what Comic-Con has become. You know, it, it's still, I'm sure it's still, uh, while it's cool to to see its, its success, you know, it was great, I'm sure, as you said, to appreciate, you know, it in a more intimate capacity than what it's normally accustomed to. Now, with with all of those things said, you know, of, of how how things are, are, are progressing to, you know, what we're accustomed to with our cons, you know, keep you know, shed a little bit of light on that. I mean, um, I know you're you're no longer with, you know, San Diego, you know, Comic Fest, you know, show uh, show that you uh, founded after um, uh, Comic-Con Inter International. However, you know, I'm still sure you were still, you know, in lieu and in communication of, you know, some of the things that, you know, were still, you know, challenges, you know, not just among contemporaries that, you know, with who are the showrunners themselves, but also, you know, with, with your baby of, of uh, Comic Fest. So can you, you know, talk about that? Uh, yeah, well, Comic Fest, uh, it, it was in March, and I, I turned it over to some some younger fans, which had always been my intention, because, you know, you need, you need new people to carry things on and, and keep it relevant to them and, you know, their peers. And, and uh, you know, hopefully they'll uh, keep the good things that, that you know, make Comic Fest what it is, but, you know, add, add to it new things that, you know, appeal to them and that they enjoy. Anyway, they did a great job. The, it was a real fun convention in, in March, and they're working on the next one, so I'm looking forward to that, too. Excellent, excellent. And, I mean, in, in speaking to that, too, in any circumstance of, you know, passing the torch, so to speak, you know, to the next person to carry to carry it further, you know, would you say it was, and I know for some, they they say that it's easy and some, you know, they say it was hard, you know, what would you say you were right in the middle in terms of, you know, kind of just letting go and, and, you know, being more in the fan capacity versus, you know, uh, uh, acting at, in that producer capacity of, of making sure all the logistics were running smoothly, you know, with that show? Um, well, I, there was a, there was finally a, a group of people that were volunteering for Comic Fest that I was pretty confident could take it over and do a good job of running it. Um, and so I, I just completely turned it over to them last April, uh, you know, last year. And uh, they've been working on it since then. And, and I helped out a little with like science fiction programming because they didn't really have someone for that. And, you know, when if they had a question, I would answer it. But other than that, uh, 
they ran the whole the whole fest and you know they had learned enough from working you know volunteering in previous years uh but you know they did a great job excellent excellent now in switching gears a bit because i do want to get back to comic fest switching gears just uh, a bit over to international you know just as you were commenting before you know they had a special edition this past winter and you know i i yeah that was for many people it was i guess i guess you could say more so for comic-con it was kind of like i guess you could say a litmus test of, of how they could you know kind of find to some things before you know the larger show so with that in, in mind can you you know because you you said that you had a attended special edition so in in talking about that what were some things that that you said that there were some components that were smaller, but uh, that that felt more intimate. But what was uh, as a as someone who attended? What were some things that you noticed uh, that were some cool things that came out of you know this that more intimate experience that you know that you hope to see you know going into the show coming this week? Well, it's just a different show being. Excuse me. Being um, as large as Comic Con is, it, it just makes it a different kind of show. Um, so you know, it, it'll be more crowded, but you'll also have some of the more high-profile exhibitors and guests that that you know you aren't going to have at a smaller event like the special edition. So you know, Hollywood will show up in force this week, and and, um, and I, I'm sure you know they'll they'll have the big booths, uh, the different Hollywood companies that will be shown off um and the, you know the comics companies and whatnot so for me for people that that you know really like what comic-con is now you know that's the show they want but i like it all and, and I, I i just found it enjoyable to have a little more low-key relaxed comic-con but still you know have a lot of great programming and you know a fun dealer's room and and all that and you know they got a chance to try out the the COVID stuff and, and that ran really smoothly. The, uh, you know, getting, getting your ID, your COVID uh, vaccination record checked and, and your wristband and all that. And that went, that went really smoothly and it didn't delay much of anything. So, you know, they seem to have that well in hand. Cool. Cool. And, and speaking of this coming year's uh, show on uh, the next few days, what are some things you know, that you as a fan, what are some things that you are really keen to, you know, check out this week that you are very excited about? I mean, you know, sure, as you said, you know, there's some comics that are happening there, you know, Hollywood, as you said, is going to have its presence with, you know, film and television and all those things. So, you know, what wh what is going to be the itinerary for you, so to speak, coming into this week? Well, the big thing for me is on, um, on Thursday, was, uh, this year is the 50th anniversary of the first Comic Con that was at the San Diego's El Cortez Hotel, uh -huh. and that was where it was for most of the seventy, most of the seventies from seventy two on, and then eighty one was the last year it was there, and that was a real special run of conventions, uh, pretty free spirited, um, a lot of fun, a lot of uh, amazing guests, uh, even though it was a relatively smaller convention, you know, uh, started out maybe around under a thousand and peaked around 5,000 um, attendees. So it was, it was a real special period of time for people who've gone to Comic-Con for a lot of years. So when I was chairman in 72, I was uh, 17. I was Comic-Con chairman in 1972, the first year we were at the El Cortez. And so I thought, you know, it'd be fun this year to have a little celebration and recognize those years of Comic-Cons that are kind of a golden age of Comic-Con to some people. And, and so uh, another another longtime Comic Con uh, volunteer, Anthony Keith, and I got together and and got some support from Comic Con uh, to do a celebration Thursday night uh, for the, the the El Cortez years and the 50th anniversary of that convention. Um, it's it's not produced or sponsored by Comic Con, but they've approved of it and they helped us get it set up. And then um, uh, earlier in the day, let's see, was it at two o'clock uh, in room 23 ABC, we're having a panel about the El Cortez years of, of Comic-Con and gonna have some, one of the original guests who was there, Milt Gray, who's an animator, 
Um, Jack Estrada, who runs the Eisner Awards, is going to be on the on the panel, and yeah, that should be a lot of fun. So I'd say that's the biggest thing I'm looking forward to this year. I lost your audio there for a moment. There we go. There we go. So okay. um, just as I was mentioning at the top of, uh, you know, co-founding, you know, Comic-Con International and afterwards Comic Fest, um, would you say now at this point of, of, of having a hand in those two shows that, you know, now you want to, you know, take sit back and just kind of like uh, uh, enjoy, you know, what, what has become of those shows and what they have transform to or would you say that it will that you will again get the itch to do an, another uh, a show at some point down the line uh, yeah i don't uh, have any plans to do another show um it's not you know it'll be nice to be able to go and not to have that responsibility and just be able to enjoy it i have you know there's a, a few panels um, I was involved in arranging for setting up this year. So that's uh, at, at Comic-Con. And so that's, that's uh, the main thing. Oh, I think I kind of lost you there. Okay, no, I think, uh, no, you're still there. I, I just uh, lost your video just there for, for a bit. But I, we can still hear you. Oh, okay. But go ahead, continue. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, so anyway, so um, you know, I'm looking forward to. I saw you just interviewed uh, Ugo Castro. Yep. Yep. Uh, yes. So he's a he's a good friend, and and so I'm looking forward to his panel, and and I'm looking forward to attending his Gamacon event. And no, I think I think he's doing it in November this year. Yes. Uh, yes. So First week of November. Uh, yes. So that's always a lot of fun. I really like going to that. And, the, you know, the, the fans in Mexico are great. It's a lot of fun going down there. Um, the food is great. So it's a, it, that's really enjoyable. If anybody lives in a close enough vicinity that they can get to Mexicali in November, that's really a nice time, to uh, a nice convention to attend. All right. And um, so and I, I helped put together or I helped arrange for a, a panel on uh, Thursday from 5.30 to 6.30 called uh, Enhancing Indigenous Storytelling with Comics, Animation, and More. And that's uh, uh, some members of uh, local uh, Kumeyaay, uh, Native uh, American tribes, and uh, also um, another uh, California, a member of another California tribe uh, are going to get together and talk about using different pop culture media to tell or retell their you know traditional stories and enhance the storytelling that they've you know they've done for thousands of years so i'm mean, looking forward to that one all right excellent excellent all right so with that being said you know mike as always thank you so much thank you for squeezing in some uh you know time today to talk about you know san diego comic-con to talk about san diego comic fest before i let you go can you tell folks you know where they can find you um I'll be around Comic Con. That's it. You know, if you <laughs> if you recognize me, feel free to say hi. But that's where I'll be. All right, cool. Well, sounds good. Uh, well, there you guys have it. Again, I want to thank Mike Towery for uh, coming on and, and you know talking about this year's show. I'm your host, uh, Brandon Troy, host and co-creator of Movies and Shakers Unlimited. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be safe out there, and uh, see you soon. Bye. Okay, bye, Brandon. Bye bye.